time that Laura and I graduated from law school, it was not uncommon that you'd be in a meeting and you'd be the only woman there. It is definitely a testament to her skill and work ethic that she was viewed as able to lead an organization the size of Abbott and then AbbVie. It is an adage of the legal world that women attract women. So being able to see somebody like yourself in that kind of role really is inspirational to those behind her. She is always thinking about ways to provide opportunities for people who are on her team. Her role as, as a senior woman executive at both companies has been an important hallmark for women across not just the legal world, but across others uh, within the organization. I met Laura when I was on the other side of a case from her, and I very quickly developed respect for her. She was clearly smart, she was clearly thoughtful, and she had the courage to take risks. She has really terrific judgment, not just the ability to analyze complicated legal problems, but to come to judgments that are meaningful in the real world. And when she comes to a judgment and she's convinced it's right, she stands by it. She has the emotional intelligence to be able to get all of that done as a matter of leadership. If you look at her team at Abbey, she has brought in a number of very talented women and given them the opportunity to succeed. She's mentored them, empowered them, and trusted them. She has a strength of character and a confidence that allows her to reach out, touch, and empower other people. And I think that is very important. Laura was a strong mentor she had very high expectations, but she helped put you in a position and give you the tools to meet those expectations, which made me a better lawyer. She wanted to see the lawyers who worked for her succeed and gave us the tools to do that. There was an ABA study that came out and the study showed how few lead trial lawyers are women. So at the time, my chief judge said, you know, Amy, what should we do about this? And so we put together a general counsel panel and Laura was on that panel. And I talked to her a couple months later and she said, Amy, I always thought that we were really progressive in what we do. But after attending the symposium and thinking about things, I went back and I revamped our requirements for outside counsel on cases to make sure that we are including more women and that we do have diverse teams. So the fact that she already had things in place at Abbott, but when she saw that there was more they could do and actually implemented it, that's what's going to lead to change. Laura has been a leader and a mentor to countless in the legal profession. She's had numerous individuals that have moved on to be general counsels at other companies. She also has a primarily female legal department that she has grown. We were having a discussion about the legal profession as a whole and how it had pretty much stagnated in diversity. She was frustrated that she wasn't seeing change. She said, look, we have to do something. I want real accountability. I don't want optics. I want to really move the needle here. It has to be achievable, meaningful, you know, what can we do? I really think our diversity in law initiative is the shining example of how much Laura cares about the legal profession. There's definitely a ripple effect from what Laura has established, and it's just such a great momentum that Laura really has helped us achieve for the profession. Good afternoon. Thank you, Maureen. And thank you so much to the American Bar Association's Commission for Women in the Profession for this recognition and for the important work you do every day to ensure an equitable and inclusive environment for all legal professionals. Thank you also to my friends, my colleagues, and to my family for taking the time to be here today. Your recognition of the importance of this pursuit and this award is really personally meaningful to me, and I appreciate your thoughtfulness in being here. I am truly honored to receive the 2022 Margaret Brent Award and to join the group of recipients before me who have and continue to drive meaningful change in the legal industry. Without them and the generation of women before us, including Margaret Brent, who fought for equal representation, I'm certain that I would not be able to stand here before you today. Throughout my career, 
I've seen the increase in opportunities for women and underrepresented groups in our industry, but the progress has been slow. And I know we would all like to see more opportunity and more representation today, and we all hope for a brighter tomorrow. To achieve our goal of true equity, women need to be represented at the table. And to earn that right, they must be provided with opportunities and mentorship to advance in the profession. And they, in turn, need to create those same opportunities to help the next generation. And it isn't just the women that need to engage here. We all need to commit to making real strides to achieving the goal of equity in our profession and in society at large. I am so appreciative for the support, the dedication, and the hard work of my colleagues in the AbbVie Legal Department. This is their award too. The commitment that they demonstrate daily to drive meaningful impact both within our own walls and within the industry at large has allowed us to make real sustainable change. Change that is rooted in measurable results, data, and accountability. At AbbVie, as a result of our longstanding commitment to diversity, more than two thirds of our legal department as a whole is comprised of women. And of our attorneys, more than 50% are female and almost 30% are individuals from underrepresented populations. And I know all of us are very proud of these statistics. But this award also belongs to our outside council partners who have worked with us to advance opportunities and mentorship for both female and underrepresented attorneys within their law firms as well. In our outside council initiative, we met our goals of equal female and male partner hours on our legal matters. We doubled minority partner hours to 15% and we exceeded 50% of the hours from underrepresented, um, from underrepresented counsel at all levels, partners and associates in the aggregate. And as we evaluate these goals annually, we all realize that they must be sustainably met. It's not a once or done and it requires focus and commitment by all of us every day. And to create the lasting change, we also need to ensure that we are developing a pipeline of diverse talent in partnership with law, with law schools and universities. At AbbVie, we've worked to establish beneficial relationships with law schools and universities to develop an internship program that provides valuable work opportunities to our 1L interns who in turn often go on to gain additional experience at our law firm partners. As the African proverb states, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. The shared commitment by all of us at AbbVie, by our partner law firms, by the law schools and the universities have enabled us to go far, but we still have quite a ways to go. So if I had one last call for action, it would be to encourage every one of us to double down on our own personal commitment to being the change that we want to see, whether it be through mentorship, advocacy, providing opportunities for growth and advancement, building diverse candidate pipelines, each one of us can support the next generation of women leaders through the power we hold in our positions today so don't waste your platform and miss the opportunity to drive real advances in our profession and in society. It's the single greatest action that we can take to provide for the attorneys of the future and to honor the women who have come before us. So thank you once again to the ABA's Commission on Women in the Profession for this honor. I'm deeply grateful to accept such a prestigious award and to join this esteemed group of honorees. Thank you very much.